Where are we headed? What is convergence? Convergence is streams of the faith coming together to worship together in a way that includes parts of the different streams without saying this one stream is the only way. All right, so if you're a Christian, see, this is not working, see where you are at on the family tree. You know what, I'll just screen capture it and put the image up. Okay, so if you're a Christian, did you see yourself somewhere located on the Christian family tree? It's a good chance you'll find your stream of where you come from. At the Sacred Commons, we call ourselves Convergent, but we get asked every week, what does that mean? What does that even mean? So we need to address the question, what is Convergence and why should I even care? Okay, what is Convergence Christianity. What is a Convergent Church? You may be watching this video saying, I don't even care about Christianity, let alone Convergent Christianity or whatever it is you're talking about, whatever that mumbo jumbo is. And I get it. Christianity has had a rough go at it for the past few decades. Has it ever really gone perfectly well for Christianity? But before you tune this out, here's why Convergence matters. My guess is, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, if you've come from the United States or any land influenced by Western Christianity, to some degree, you have been affected by it. You, you may have had grandparents who were devout Catholics or Protestants. Maybe you were a devout Christian. Maybe you're becoming a devout Christian. So no matter if you're a practicing Catholic, an ex-Catholic, one of the thousands of flavors of Protestantism, evangelical, exvangelical, if you're recovering, fill in the blank, recovering charismatic, convergence matters. It, it touches on your reality, no matter who you are. In some way, you've been affected by the evangelical, charismatic, sacramental stream of the church. Convergence, just as a general term, means coming closer together, bringing things together, like three rivers coming together, converging together. Likewise, convergent Christianity is a movement among evangelicals and charismatics where they're trying to blend liturgies from things like the Book of Common Prayer and other sources together. Liturgical, sacramental, mixed with charismatic evangelical. Now that's how Wikipedia and other sources define it. And that's okay, that's, that's a good answer, but we have a more simplified answer. Convergence to us is simply the elimination of false choices. Eliminating this idea that a Christian can only be a Pentecostal or a sacramental Christian, a liturgical historical Christian or an evangelical Christian. Convergence says you can be all three. Convergent Christians make this case that when you look at the early church, when you look even into the book of Acts, this full spectrum, full flavored, diverse and dynamic broadband approach to the faith, you can find people who embodied all of that. They were charismatic, they were evangelical in that they shared good news, and they had liturgies. They prayed the prayers, they committed themselves to the apostles' teaching, they broke the bread, they gathered, they proclaimed. All of these movements were there in the early church and convergent Christians have a desire to tether themselves to those roots.
I don't think Luther and the reformers ever imagined that we would wind up with so many denominations. Don't get me wrong, the Reformation was needed. Things had gone horribly awry with the church and stuff needed fixed. But I'm not sure the reformers envisioned the level of malignant proliferation and denominationalism one after another claiming that their beliefs and their ideas were right and that others were wrong and that they were now armed with the Bible and their interpretation and that their ideas about scripture held sway. Claims of group infallibility and authority within the church became carcinogenic. It caused the body of Christ to have rapid cell division and then isolationism, individualism, and then eventually, ultimately, competitiveness started showing up and people in the church were more loyal to their group and their set of beliefs than they were to other Christians. And so here we are, 500 years later, with 30,000 denominations plus, dealing with the reality of that. Now, on the flip side, let me just say this. Will there always be diversity within the church? Yes. Will there always be distinctions within the church? Yes, thanks be to God. But we can celebrate these distinctions without demeaning other groups, elevating ourselves with a false sense of superiority over them. I don't think that unity requires doing away with denominations. There are a lot of people who have certain denominational things that are deal breakers, and I get that. There are people who have ideas that haven't been wanted or received within their context. I get that too. But I like the language of Rachel Held Evans. This is what she said. The various Christian traditions are like different facets of a diamond, refracting the same light, or as workers tending to a shared garden. Unity does not require uniformity. Jesus said his father's house has many rooms. In this metaphor, I like to imagine the Presbyterians hanging out in the library, the Baptists running the kitchen, the Anglicans setting the table, the Anabaptists washing feet with the hose in the backyard, the Lutherans making liturgy for the laundry, the Methodists stoking the fire in the hearth, the Catholics keeping the family history, the Pentecostals throwing open all the windows and doors to let more people in. I love this metaphor. The unity of it reminds me of when Jesus prayed for all believers. His prayer was simple, that they would all be one. Even as he was in the Father and the Father in him, in the same way that we, all Christians, could share in that divine dance, that holy triune relationship, specifically so that the world may believe. And here at the Sacred Commons, it's our understanding that common worship and common form actually reinforces our oneness and our unity of the shared common roots that all Christians have, which is especially important for the witness of the church in a post-Christian age. These practices that lead us from the past into the future, these common roots of the faith, when we talk about them, we see life and hope in this and a divine continuity that, just like in the book of Acts, the church is and will continue to be beautifully sacramental, evangelical, and charismatic. Sacramental, evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic. What, what do these things mean? Sacramental just means that God still acts and dwells within ordinary things fully engaging us through tactile things like bread and wine and oil and water and marriage and laying on of hands and these tangible, visible, audible things, outward signs of an inward grace that are somehow connected to the divine. And as a Pentecostal, let's talk about that. I grew up Pentecostal and I always believe that the Spirit still graciously gives gifts, still shatters our preconceived ideas, and that miracles are still possible. And in this sense, you can find charismatics in every stream of the church. In other words, you'll find people who believe that the Spirit-empowered ministry of Christ continues on in His body. You and I, we get to participate, and this is good news. Speaking of good news, evangelical, good news. If you believe that 
the gospel is good news, you're technically, I would say, an evangelical. Evangelicals have traditionally been known within the Protestant movement as those who emphasize the authority of scripture, personal conversion, the doctrine of salvation by faith in some form of atonement theory. But unfortunately, over the years, especially recent years, the word evangelical has more of a cultural homogenous tone now, and even a strong political connotation, which has left many evangelicals like myself saying, hey, I don't think Jesus would be down with this. I think God is not necessarily partisan to a certain political group. Many folks haven't felt comfortable with associating with that term, and I get it, I understand that. But for us at the Sacred Commons, we believe that evangelical in the broader, wider sense is simply a belief that the inescapable, relentless love of God is good news for all people and that needs to be shared and lived out. What the name has unfortunately become known for is what we are working hard to change and to rescue. These represent a good overview of the practices and ideas that you'll find within convergence. To use a metaphor, imagine you have a record collection and within that record collection someone's telling you you have to choose between classical or jazz or rock or hip-hop or electronic or pop. But your mind and your heart really desire the fullness that these musical geniuses have created. I think maybe you might geek out over one particular genre or artist or emphasis over another, but really you want to enjoy it all and why should you limit yourself? Convergence says, you don't have to, nor should you. I think a lot of people might resonate with that idea. I should also add that Convergence is so much bigger than this. It deals with culture, technology, the great emergence. That's what we're living in now. Latinized Christianity is undergoing a major transformation. This happens every 500 years or so. 500 years ago, we had the Great Reformation, largely fueled by a printing press. Now we have the great emergence, largely fueled by the internet. But that's another vlog. So now it is time for announcements and kicking off our announcements this week. It's actually another video. Check this out. Hi, my name is JP. I am the pastor of a new church plant here in Youngstown, Ohio called the Sacred Commons. I'm Nathaniel. I'm the media guru for the Homebrewed Christianity Podcast. And I'm Gail Catanella. I'm the priest at St. John's Episcopal Church. And we are so excited to invite you to see Trip Fuller. Dr. Dr. Trip Fuller. He worked really hard for that song. I, I always have to make sure to catch myself and say, Dr. Trip Fuller is very important. Right, should we start over again? <laughs> no, no, no. I like that. I, that's, I'm, this, is, uh, this is the banter. Trip is the host of the Homebrew Christianity Podcast. He's going to come and do a live taping in Youngstown, finally. It's sort of like a, a TED Talk meets a sermon meets like an NPR radio show. So it'll be a lot of fun. There will be beer. Your ticket includes one free beer. So make sure to come and enjoy that. And Trip will be talking about religion and science and the crazy relationship between religion and science. You can ask a bunch of questions and he'll answer them all. He's very smart, very funny, and it's going to be a great time. And what is the name of the event? God in the Evolving Cosmos. Provocative. You can find out more information on Facebook. There's actually a Facebook event. And you can get your tickets right there from Eventbrite. Mark it down in your calendar. Come and join us on February the 17th with Dr. Trip Fuller. It's going to be at Westside Bowl in Youngstown, Ohio, right there on Mahoning Avenue. That's right. Four o'clock is when happy hour starts, so make sure to come thirsty and uh, it'll probably start around 4.30 or 5, and then when you're done, you go bowling and eat some pizza. We're really looking forward to getting to know you. Little plug for the 16th. So also, Trip is coming, Dr. Trip Fuller, <laughs> on Saturday uh, at 10 o'clock at St. John's Episcopal Church to talk to us faith leaders and people who are interested about talking to people about faith and religion. So you're welcome to come to that too. That's free. No beer. We're looking forward to being a part of this. Here's what you need to do right after this video is over. Go online and get your tickets. Diane and I will be there. We look forward to meeting you, having a good time, enjoying the freedom of allowing science to speak to religion, allowing our intellectual integrity and faith to coexist. We're looking forward to that. And pizza and bowling. We're looking forward to bowling. Number two, second thing we need to talk about is we're starting a club. You want to be in it? It's a book club. We're going to be reading The Great Spiritual Migration by Brian McLaren. 
We're gonna read the chapters together, have discussions, share ideas, and change the world. If you wanna sign up for our book club, go to our website, thesacredcommons.com. You can do so right there from our homepage. Finally, all of our podcasts are now available on every single platform. Just search for The Sacred Commons. You can find them there, subscribe, and enjoy. Hey, will someone please, please help us? Look at, look at, look at how sad this plant is. All right, let's, let's round this off. I am not going to play you out or sing you out. Instead, I'm gonna do you one better, and that is leave you with a quote from Sister Joan Chittister, a wonderful quote on liturgy. She said this, intent on living a spiritual life that matters rather than a spiritual fad that fascinates, or a spiritual program that anesthetizes the soul to everything but the self. We find out in the liturgy what makes life matter by following Jesus through every element of it. So, it is quite windy outside. I am still going to attempt to fly my drone for you and send you out with some beautiful footage of Youngstown, Ohio on today. I think my prayer for you as I finish this video is that maybe one day you'll come and join us here at the Sacred Commons and contribute to the convergence that's going on. Peace.